Hello everyone, welcome to video 10 of chapter 4. In this video, we'll go through a couple of examples of uh, LP problem and uh, the dual, and using the duality theorem to help us make some conclusions. And we observe some connections as well. So our first example is from the textbook, example 4.4.1. Let's consider the following problem. We call it problem one. Um, we label it. Okay, so it's a maximization problem of this objective function, subject to. So three constraints. And I have four variables, x1, x2, x3, x4. They are all restricted. So um, this is a max problem, and the inequality is less than equal sign. So the problem is in max form. So we make some remarks. So um, we could put this problem in standard form by changing maximization into minimization, mm, multiply with negative 1, and by adding slack variables to change this into equal sign. And we see that if we add a slack variable for each of the constraint, then the remaining um, standard form problem, the constraints are actually in canonical form. Then we can put it into our LP assistant and follow the simplex algorithm and solve for this. Okay, so... Um, um, at this point of the course, um, we should all be um, pretty familiar with this process and with the usage of the LP assistant. Let's take a look. Okay, so here is the, um, the tableau in the LP assistant, and we shall be able to read this. Um, so the first part, the initial tableau, and these are the four original variables. And then we added three slack variables, x5, x6, x7. And they serve as the basic variables for this canonical form. And then the right-hand side is positive. And the objective function, we have to write it into a minimization one. So we multiply all the coefficients by negative one. And this is what we will get. Okay, and then we um, follow the algorithm of simplex. Pick this one and figure this column to pivot. You click on that, and you get this part of the tableau. And then you see there's still a negative coefficient. And then you pivot here by click on that. And then you have this part of the tableau. And then we see that the coefficients here, we don't see any negative. And that means the optimal has been reached. Okay, so um, the conclusion of the algorithm is uh, mostly stored in the last line in your tableau. So here we would conclude that the minimum is negative 112, which means the maximum is 112. And it's obtained at the basic solution. x1 is 10, x2 is 9, and x3 and x4 are 0. And uh, for the dual problem, um, this computation already um, is telling us a lot of information. So for the dual problem, we know that these three constants here for the slack variable, the value they take would actually be the point of the optimal solution for the dual problem. So it's 2, 0, and three. Okay, so and let's form the dual problem and check on that. Okay, so um, problem one is a max problem. Then we follow the definition and we form the dual problem, which we call it problem two, which is a mean problem. Okay, so you take the right hand side to form the objective function. And then you give three variables, one for each of the constraints. And then you transpose the A matrix. 
and put the objective coefficients here on the right hand side and you switch the inequality side okay so this um i hope uh, we are pretty fluent with this um, um formulation and uh, what's interesting here is okay so how do we solve this um one way would be to observe that we actually solved the original problem which is the dual of this problem one is the dual of problem two and then two is the dual of one they are mutual relations so by the duality theorem we can conclude without solving two the following that is the point two zero three is a feasible solution and the v at that point is 112. Why? Because it's the max of the other problem. And then, and then V equal to 112 is actually the minimum. Okay, and let's verify this claim or this conclusion by actually solving the two using LP assistant. We can um, rewrite it into standard form by adding slack variables for each of the constraint and then put it into canonical form by adding artificial variables okay so let's see the details okay so this page is the tableau um, from the lp assistant so let's see what we have done here so this part so and um, here we always call it x actually in the problem we call it y but okay just get used to that little twist so we have this part as the constraint and then we add the slack variable to make it an equation and then we multiply some with negative one to get a positive constant column here therefore you see sum is one sum is negative one Okay, and then we see this with 1 can already be used as a basic variable and all the rest are 0. So that's a basic variable. And this one also is a basic variable for x7. Then we need two more. Then we add artificial variables here. So we add 1, we get an x8 and we get another artificial variable for this one, which is x9. And then you see this part is artificial and also this one is also related to the artificial variable okay so okay so um i am not going into too much detail of this um, we we already know what to do so first to minimize this here for the w click on three then you get the second part of the tableau i still have a negative one and then i click on that and i get the third part of the tableau which I see I still have negative terms here, and then let me click on that. So the tableau is long. Um, we have to go to the next page to see what happens after you click on the nine. Okay, so, um, and this is what you get. After click on the nine, you get this part, and then you see now um, W is zero. There's no negative here, so that means stage one is completed then now you go to stage two and you see there's a negative coefficient and then you figure out this is where you have to pivot you click on that and then you get this part of the tableau and then you observe that all the coefficients here are non-negative and this part we ignore because that's the artificial variable so it's only these coefficients that matters so these are all non-negative and then that means um, the minimum is obtained here. And then you can conclude the basic solutions by looking at the right-hand side, assign them to the basic variables. Okay, so we see that um, the, the minimum is 112. If you recall for the original problem, the max is also 112. And this is... Um, obtained at x3 is 3, x6 is 1, x1 is 2, and x7 is 19. Okay, some observations. So this confirmed the duality theorem. We um, have uh, the 
this result as predicted by the theorem. Also, we see that between the two problems, problem one and two, problem one is easier to solve than problem two. And also, we see that we can solve problem one and we get the answer for problem two without having to solve problem two thanks to the duality theorem. Okay, so this sentence is important. Okay, just uh, keep that in your mind. Okay, so that's the end of this example. And in your textbook, there are a couple more of um, such examples with um, discussions. I encourage you to read them. Example 4.4.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. They're not um, difficult to read. Just read through them and uh, it will be helpful. Okay, so let's take one more example. Um, slightly um, different. Okay, so um, we're going to state the problem using matrix and vector form. It's more compact. So let's say I let define uh, matrix A. The coefficient matrix, I collect all the numbers here. It's a 3 times 4 matrix. And I have a vector B, that's the constant vector. And the C, that's the objective coefficient vector. With these defined, and I define my problem. I call the problem um, A bracket. It says, minimize C dot X subject to ax bigger than b, x bigger than 0. Okay, so that's a mean form of a problem. And then the problem asks you to do the following. Verify that x0, this vector given here in this bracket with all the fractions, is an optimal solution to the problem a. And uh, y0, which is given here, is an optimal um, point, optimal solution of the dual, even though I have not even written out of the dual, I want you to verify that. Okay, so take a look at the statements and let's see how we can handle this. Okay, the first step is to form the dual. So, mm, following the definition, so the mean becomes the max c dot x becomes b dot y for a y and then a is transposed a transpose times y is less than the coefficient here and y is restricted okay and then we call this problem b b is the dual of a okay so step two of the problem now i need to verify that the given x naught is a feasible solution for problem A. So I just compute A times X0. A is that matrix, X0 is that vector. You calculate this product out, and then you get this vector, 2, 12, 14. I need to verify that it is less than B. What is the B vector? 2, 12, 4. It's the same, so less than equal sign holds. And then I uh, would also like to compute the value of the objective function at x0. So that would equal to c dot x0. Okay, this is the c vector and this is the x0. Calculate the dot product, you get value 37. Okay, step three. Now we need to verify the similar thing for the dual problem, that is, the given y naught is a feasible solution. So it's very similar, so I need to compute A transpose y naught. That's the matrix, and this is the vector that's given. If you calculate that product and you find out we get this, and uh, we want to show this vector is less than C, and what is C? C is 7, 11, negative 3, negative 1. So you compare each component. You see that the second, third, and fourth components are the same. 
and the first one, 6.5, is less than 7. So this less than equal to sign holds. And then we can also compute the um, objective function value at y0, which is uh, y0 dot the b vector, and it's 37. Okay, so um, now what do we have? We have that y0 dot b equals c dot x0 equals 37. Then by duality theorem, we conclude that 37 is both the maximum of problem B and the minimum of problem A. And the X0 and the Y0 are the optimal solutions for the problem A and B, respectively. Okay, so this is an example that um, if you found two points, two solutions, X0 and Y0, that they satisfy this condition here, then you don't have to um, go through the solution and you don't need to go through simplex algorithm. You just need to verify that they're feasible and then you can conclude that will be the optimal solution. Okay, so um, I hope you think this is quite neat and uh, you enjoy this video and uh, next Next video, we'll start a new subchapter, chapter 4.5, and I look forward to see you then.